Good evening, folks. Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another Legacy stream. Today we are playing with Apple Pie's 96 Bird deck. All right. <laughs> so bird is the word. We'll, we'll start there, okay? Now that we've established that, the other word is Winter Orb. Okay, that's two words, but I think you get the idea. Winter Orb is a disgusting magic card. Ah, Nathan suggests Burbs. I agree. Burbs it is. All right, so why Winter Orb? Derevi, Imperial Tactician, says, Whenever this enters the battlefield, or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may tap or untap target permanent. So the goal is that you have Derevi in play when you have Winter Orb. So you get to go and untap all of your stuff, and your opponent doesn't. And you can also tap down some of their lands that they might have been holding up in an attempt to like build up from Winter Orb. So this is really kind of a neat idea. And yes, Nathan, I'm, I'm in exactly the same boat as you are. I hope that it does work. So what's the supporting cast? Uh, obviously, we're going to be a bird tribal deck because reasons. So we have Baleful Strix and then a bunch of other cards you might not know. Now, Glint Nest Crane was one that saw play in some builds of Alurin. So that's cool. And we can use that to find Winter Orb or Equipment because we have a small Stoneforge Mystic package. And we have some other flyers here. Uh, it makes our creature spells with flying cost one colorless more less to cast. And whenever a creature with flying ETBs, uh, this gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And we have Empyrean, Empyrean Eagle, which is a lord for flying creatures. So, um... I want to start off by saying that I am worried about this deck list. And I am worried that I'm not going to be able to cast my own cards. So if we take a look at this, I am a four-color deck. I have blue-black cards, I have blue-white cards, I have bant cards. And I also have four wastelands. Now, the Wastelands are supposed to work with the Winter Orbs to help put squeezes on the mana base. And I have a feeling that we're going to end up tripping over our own lands quite a bit tonight. All right, uh, so we have some questions about Derevi. Uh, so let's take a look at wording here. Derevi? Zoom. All right, so whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may tap or untap target permanent. So if... You have five creatures and they all deal combat damage. I believe this is going to trigger five separate times. So, you know, if you have three birds in play and Derevi, those birds hit and then you go and you untap a bunch of your stuff or tap down a bunch of your opponent's stuff or, or whatever. We're not trying to, like, tap our own Winter Orb here and get, like, all of our things to untap at once. One thing at a time is, is totally fine here. Uh, this isn't like, say, an Urza Echo deck that sometimes play Winter Orb and you tap the Winter Orb at their end step so that you get to untap and they don't. We're not going for something like that here. Uh, we're going for just individual untapping triggers. All right, so concern number one I have with this deck is, is the mana base. I, I think we're going to have to mulligan a handful of hands just due to bad mana, and I'm really worried about Stifle and Wasteland messing us up. Um, thing number two I'm a little bit worried about is I'm not sure how some of our math works out. So we have Glint Nest Cranes to find artifacts, but we don't actually have that many artifacts to hit, right? Uh, we have like Baleful Strix, the Winter Orbs, and the, the equipment package. So... What is that, nine? Uh, yeah, so we have ten hints, hits for Glint Nest Crane. I'm a little worried about that. Um, number two, I'm a little worried that some of our creatures aren't quite individually good enough for Legacy. So, like, the Watcher of the Spires as, a, like, a pseudo-lord effect to make our other birds cheaper is cool, but then some of this stuff is, like, Bant or Double Colored, so we're not actually getting a discount there. And... I'm a little worried that some of these cards are just going to feel a little bit clunky. And that, that, like, between that clunkiness and kind of the lower power level of some of our cards and the mana base, 
I'm a little worried that we're going to trip over ourselves too much, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I do like one of the things that I see in the sideboard here. The Unsettled Mariner, which is a bird and a sliver and many other things, occasionally a merfolk. And I think protecting our birds with that is going to be kind of cool. Um, I'm also a little worried that we're a touch too soft to combo. So we have Force of Wills in the main deck, and that's basically it. And our sideboard doesn't like super, super improve that in any one direction. But we'll see how it goes. Um, Brand Ambassador. There are some other bird things that you can be thinking about. Um, there's an enchantment. It's one in a white. It, I think it's something airy. And whenever, I think it's whenever a bird you control dies, you put a feather counter on it. And then your birds get plus one, plus one for each feather counter on it. And so, uh, some people have used that in the past with Battle Screech, which makes bird tokens in slightly different versions of this build. I've also seen people play with things like Favorable Winds, which is a two mana plus one, plus one enchantment for all flying creatures you control yeah um all right i'm gonna pause the video for youtube folks for a second all right youtube the uh the twitch council has conferred for a moment and uh we have decided to cut the wastelands because that level of uh of avarice was just too great so we added in three dual lands and a cavern of souls in the place of wasteland and hopefully that smooths things out a little bit all right um with that said, I'm going to jump into a league and see how this does. Okay, the Verdant Catacombs doesn't get the Tundra, but it gets everything else. Okay, that that that's fine. <laughs> Alright, uh, folks, if you're excited about some hot legacy bird action and you want to support my content, please throw me a like real quick. I really appreciate it. It's been helping my analytics a lot and really has been uh, making things more sustainable for me. Um, I recently parted ways with Cardboard Live and I lost one of my sponsors, so the little bits of support right now mean a little bit more than ever. All right, let's battle. The Swag Jesus, thank you very much for throwing your support this way. I really do appreciate it. All right, um, we have a hand of magic cards. We'll cast a Baleful Strix on two, and we'll go from there. Oh, that's right, it was. Uh, the Swag Jesus, basically everything I do on both Twitch and YouTube is donation-based. So, I'm, I'm game. That usually means four or five videos a week. Hello and welcome, Rubik's Master. Um, I would like to hide my swords to plowshares on top of my library here. Let's grab, like, Tundra. Um, let's bury something a couple of cards down. And then put Swords to Plowshares. There's a world where I want to put the Force of Will 2 down, but then if they take the Baleful Strix, things are awkward. Yeah, it's pretty rare that I play a deck list that I actually pick out. The exceptions to that are like when I'm prepping for an event and when there is just something so ridiculous that I absolutely have to try it. And False Cure fell into that category this week. 
All right. Um, I want to fetch with this to shuffle away that bird that I put a couple down. I don't need to get black. I can get like green. Blue, get Tropical Island here, cast Baleful Strix without having access to black mana. Lol, 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 lol. Paperman Games, thank you very much for following. Alright, we're gonna get we're gonna get some birds. I don't think I'm going to have to read my own birds too many times. All right. Um, so the question here is, do I want to play around crop rotation into Merit Lodge this turn? Or do I just want to play some birds? I think I think I need to play around that. Because if I don't play around that, I play Derevi and attacking with Baleful Strix untap the Swords of Plowshares, and that's my turn. I think that's too risky. Yeah, but if they crop rotation and make the Merit Lodge after I tap out, I just die. So they don't get my untap trigger. This is when they deal combat damage to a player. Go blue. Oh shit, it does it on ETB too. All right, it was it was safe to do that then. The so brand ambassador, the idea is that you combo winter orb with this. And then you don't feel the effects of the winter orb nearly as much as your opponent does. That's that's the plan. It's winter orb time. Dub -dub 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 -dub. All right. White, blue, green. All right. I'll just untap another land here. I'm probably just, well, I get one more damage if I do this. Bird combo! Bird combo! Bird combo! Always yield to these. Alright. Hit him with the winter orb. We gotta hit him with the winter orb, right? It's like 
hilarious. Nice. All right, do we get hit with not of this world? If we get hit by not of this world, we lose. Otherwise, we have a lot of birds. I am really glad that we're doing the thing in round one here. Oh no, they can bounce my bird engine. Oh, maybe they won't see it. Maybe they won't know my bird is legendary. Figured it out. All right. Um, I guess I just save a land and then play Derevi next turn rather than just play a Baleful Strix. And this kind of like pigeonholes them into untapping the Caracas. And if they don't, all right, fair. Okay, yeah. See, now we don't care about the Caracas anymore. We're playing birds. We're not. We're not necessarily overly concerned with the winning and losing. I don't really need to fetch. Oh, right. Cost one less. Yet. Don't suppose I can untap that land now. No. All right. That's fine. The regular forest and the full out forest for, for the tilt value. It's strong. Yeah, this is Winter Orb. You only get to untap one land per untap step. A Dark Confidant. That's fine. Orbs indeed. Notably, overtapping last turn means that I can't play a Baleful Strix this turn. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have lethal over two turns. I'm not going to play around crop rotation. Famous last words, huh? That was the one unknown card in hand.
All right. I like submerge. Is that it? Veil of Summer is okay. But they only have so many discard spells. I have to figure out what I'm cutting. It could be the winter orbs. Really awkward with my opponent having access to Caracas and their deck and a bunch of tutors or things that dig for it. I don't think I want winter orb on the draw. I think that's going to be too slow. It might also just be too slow on the play. This is also just a clean three of that I can cut for these cards. And so I might just go for that. Yeah, this is fine. Same thing as last game, we'll hide our most valuable card or cards. Um, I redraw one of these. What don't I want? I probably don't want Bird of Paradise at this stage. I believe Flooded Strand is grabbing Tropical Island, and I'll cast Baleful Strix if it's still available. Otherwise, I probably just cast the Watcher. Oh, they're taking Glintness Crane. Interesting. I could get Savannah here. Have access to white, white in the future. I don't know if that's actually good. Kramer, thank you very much for following. That Lotus Petal is very dangerous. This card, also a little bit spooky. Not 100% spooky, but a little bit spooky. Those are cards. I'm fine with all of this. I can probably just like redraw this stuff. I just have an army of birds backed by swords to plowshares.
Um, but I'd really like to play Watcher over Baleful Strix this turn. And I can't play Watcher off of this for black mana. I can only play Strix. I'm going to set a stop in my upkeep so that I can fetch away that other watcher if I want. Like, I kind of would like a land next turn. If I get a land, I can play Strix and Watcher. I have a lot of chump blocks and my opponent is at 12. That's another thing to keep in mind. I want more white mana. Mana fine. I don't need green, green. I already have access to black. I guess I can grab Scrubland in case they crop rotation away their Urborg, though. Probably too scared to tap out. I would really like to hold up double swords. I think I need to keep deploying stuff. So now I have double swords to plowshares, which means that if my opponent does some not of this world shenanigans and they counter my one swords of plowshares, I can chump block with a Baleful Strix. And then Swords again on my turn. Although getting through 20 life would be a bit tough. Ooh. I probably need to source of plowshares that. Oh, pod racing for sure. So now, Sajiri's step is... Okay, cool. Sajiri's step is starting to be one of the things that makes me nervous. I get rid of my upkeep stop.
Yeah, um, Lord Mechile. I'm going to try to close out this game in two turns by playing another creature. The most conservative possible line is probably, like, play Bird of Paradise and Watcher of the Spires. And then hold up Swords of Plowshares as well. That gives me enough colors that Sajiri Step can't kill me. But I don't think I... I don't know that I can play around just everything here. My my clock is really bad. Like I'm going to make them have Not of this world plus the jury step. Okay, they didn't have protection. And probably put him on about a three turn clock. Maybe two if I can keep the Imperian Eagle. That's a very good draw. <laughs> That's a very good draw. Um, how do I play this turn? Stoneforge and play out Jitte. Don't let discard enter the equation. Probably. It is a burb. You see the, the glowing wings? Those are totally wings. An opponent, you may or may not have wished you didn't do that in the next 30 seconds. We'll see. One connection with this means that I'm not instantly dead to a Merit Lodge, and when I'm not instantly dead to a Merit Lodge, that means good stuff for me. I have a lot of chump blockers. Also, lol. Yeah, that's that's fine. Next turn we have two different ways to go above 21.
Okay. Uh, I won't be playing D&T today. I only do one league per stream. So today's a bird day. Bird is the word. Sometimes burb, sometimes burbs, but something of that general nature, definitely the word. Belch Master, you're fired. Congratulations. And I really wanted to land there so I could just, like, move the Batter Skull and have lethal. Actually, I just put the Sword of Fire and Ice on the bird, right? Plus four damage, that's guaranteed lethal. Is there anything that stops that? No, they have one card. Oh, right, they can make the idiot. Okay, that was just a bad play on my end. I shouldn't have put in this sword. I should have played another bird. Now my opponent will sack and make their big creature. All right, so I have a blocker back for Merit Lodge. Plus I have the ability to Gain a bunch of life, go above 20. The jury step doesn't kill me. I guess I can technically take two cards this turn. Yeah, that's fine. Anxious Hippo, thank you very much for following. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I will gain two life. I will gain two life. Now we just have lethal in the air via sort of fire and ice equip. All 
Nice. That was game two, so we gotta we gotta do that again. I think the plan more or less stays the same. I I, I don't think I like the winter orbs. Honestly, it feels like I'm tapping out too much for Veil of Summer to be good. Like, I'm not a traditional blue control deck that has, like, Fluster Storms and Spell Pierces and stuff that I'm just leaving up. I think I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this, despite the fact that it does good things, and just play a couple of other reasonable magic cards. Like, I'm going to treat this as a lethal pump spell. And then maybe play one library. I think I like that better. Um, so it doesn't have Swords of Plowshares. And it's kind of slow, but it has Baleful Strix for a redraw. I'm a little worried about this one if a hole gets punched in it. All getting to beat discard isn't exactly correct. Oh, no. I'm going to junk that. This hand is much more stable. I don't really like my opponent playing Bayou before playing their Once Upon a Time there. Like that locks them into that land drop. Welcome back. Let's brainstorm in response to that. This would be a great time to find a counter spell. Probably got grabbing Tundra with this first one. Oh no. We're gonna we're gonna chump block a bit. We're gonna, gonna chump block a bit. Black, green. No, I have green already. Black, blue. Fine. The merge would be sick. I guess Submerge wouldn't be sick. I didn't have the forest yet. Of course it will. You're like just the tiniest bit too slow. Yeah, we didn't get Sariji step, Sajiri stepped. Um, Hex Mage. I don't think I actually care about that. Yeah, I don't think I care about that. Blue, white, blue for one.
life is not great. Um, happening. I could force a will it go to 17, play a stone forge mystic on my turn. I have two sets of chump blocks. Stone forge can put a batter skull into play. Um, batter skull's awkward against hex mage. I'm just gonna let that happen. Yeah, Ark, and I, I I recorded it. It'll be on YouTube later this week. It was false cure. Uh, believe it or not, I actually played a false cure mirror during that league. 1-3 keeps Vampire Hexmage from attacking, but I think my spells being cheaper is potentially more important. For example. I get to grab a Baleful Strix. That's nice. Guess I actually currently want Jitte over Batter Skull, probably. Opponent has taken Force of Will, so I'm I'm shields down to Sajiri Step. Uh, and they have it next turn. Kind of. I don't really want to fetch for thin. My life total is super relevant right now. Okay, so I can go Jitte equip. I attack with my bird, I get two Jitte counters. <sighs> the two Jitte counters can keep me alive from a Merit Lodge attack. And then what? Vampire Hex Mage body is so relevant here. I can't just send in the Stone Forge. Rob, thank you very much for the continued support. Am I dead? Like, I can play another blocker, but then Sajiri Step beats me on their turn. I don't know that I have a good way out here. All of my birds are blue. Did I equip? Swing. Gets me to 22. It gets me through the turn. Yeah, I, I guess I have to do the thing that gets me through the turn cycle.
Also, Rob, holy cow, you're up to 32 months of support now. Thank you so much for that. Hope things are going well for you. Whoops. Okay. Not. Oh, that's actually really smart. They're getting Elvish Reclaimer out of Jete range, I see. That allows them to attack with it. Oh shit, that actually kills me, doesn't it? I block with Stoneforge, I can go up to 22. That was a very good play. That was a very, very good play. Well played opponent. Wow. What a match. Like, that's a hell of a way to start off a stream. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this hand. Um, this hand doesn't have black mana, but it has reasonable stuff in it. I think I'm just going to pitch the Strix and keep the Batter Skull. And to that I ask you, why not concede? The game is over. Like, I, I value my own time. <laughs> I value the time of the 128 viewers I currently have, plus the two to 3,000 people that will watch this on YouTube later. Like, there's something to be said about, like, fighting the good fight and not conceding till you're dead, but there's also, like, all right, I'm 1% I'm to win this match. Is it worth me playing on? The answer, I, I think, is no more often than not. It, it was especially no during that Oko era, where, like, your opponent sticks Oko or Arcanist, and you're, like, woefully behind. I conceded in a lot of those spots just for the sake of the enjoyability of the content. HDEC12, thank you very much for following. We're gonna just jam birds into my opponent's face until one of these birds sticks. I don't think I want to cast Brainstorm until I have a fetch land. Real talk, though. If we can get two Empyrean Eagles in play, they can't be removed by Lightning Bolt anymore.
That's a nuisance. This is a card I like a lot in this current metagame. I like these sorts of cards that have like some form of built-in protection of one kind or another. I like this. So it probably doesn't get to answer that. Um, do I want to brainstorm? I think I just want to naturally play this. Like a land, go Jitte equip next turn. That can be pretty good in some circumstances. All right, our first three cards in a row have been answered by Delver. Uh, that's bad. That probably means we die. Forked Bolt means that Stoneforge Mystic isn't an easy out either. Taking seven this turn, followed by seven more. And at that point, Forked Bolt is almost ready to just go to the face. E. I think I need to do this now. Oh, yikes. Yeah, no, no bueno. What's my most important color? My most important color is probably white. So we could trade this with the Delver and then play Batter Skull. Unless our opponent starts leveling Hex Drinker towards 8 this turn. Loco Cuco, the games have been grindy. Uh, we've been live for an hour and 10 minutes, and this is only match 2. Uh, okay, do I have outs to this anymore? Alright, is Batter Skull good? I play Batter Skull, I die to Delver Attack in the air. I play Empyrean Angel. I die to both creatures attacking. Yep. That's dead. I mean, the Delver player answered every card I played all game. You don't beat those starts. Uh, man, I don't have too much extra removal to bring in, do I? I am not going to be playing Winter Orb versus Delver. That operates into their plan, not my plan. I need to bring in at least two other cards. Settled Mariner could be for Lightning Bolts. <clears throat> What's the stats on these? Two, three. That dies to Lightning Bolt. Let's trim that for a Mariner, maybe. This is fine. Can I afford to get a basic? I would kind of like a basic planes here and fetch it before I can get stifled. We'll see if this bites me in the butt later, but I have three different early plays that all...
are playable off the lands that I have without being wastelanded. God, it's back. <laughs> I don't think I jam Stoneforge Mystic directly into days here. Notably, days works against my opponent a decent amount here because it means that it, their Hex Drinker will be slower to level up. It also does kind of mean that the next Unsettled Mariner is a little bit better because they get a little bit further behind on curve. We'll see if my opponent levels Hex Drinker this turn. They do level Hex Drinker this turn. They can potentially level it to three next turn. An Unsettled Mariner doesn't trade with it in combat. That's a weird brainstorm. That's main phase brainstorm when they've already made their land drop. That is very strange to me. I mean, more generally, I like the fact that, like, the text on my cards is relevant again. <laughs> it used to be that, like, any artifact or creature you played, just, like, it didn't matter what it did. And that made magic very boring. See what we can do now. If our opponent does a two mana lightning bolt here, we'll trade the shit out of this. Yes, absolutely. I'm fucking terrified of this snake. Get it out. Black land is ideal. That's okay. I think my opponent has a lightning bolt, though. They were starting to tap mana last turn pre-combat and just didn't. Long term, I'm pretty well set up to fight this Tarmogoyf. Okay, my opponent has a Delver. All right. I have a couple pieces of equipment with Force of Will back up. An okay place to be in. There's no sorcery in the graveyard yet. Sorcery in the graveyard is a wee bit annoying for me. Hey, Connor, welcome. Nice to have you back. Yeah, there's that sorcery for the graveyard I was just mentioning. Yep. 
Yeah, isn't it cool when all your like Chalice of the Void and Bobs and such have text again? We were just talking about that. Um, I kind of want to protect this card because I want to put in multiple pieces of equipment. if I just get fucking savaged by a stifle. What is this? Ah, uh, ha, ha. Uh, uh, that basically means I'm dead. Not literally. I don't know if I have outs if the Delver flips, though. Nice. Now I can at least theoretically take four this turn and four next turn. I think I like this better. All right, I lose to Stifle, I lose to Lightning Bolt, lose to Petty Theft, I lose to a piece of Artifact Removal. Yep. Um, am I technically dead? I can go to four. Play Bird of Paradise. Rip a non-fetch land. Now if I get a 4, then I have to chump block Tarmogoyf. Eh, I guess that's not technically dead. Dead if the Delver flips, though. Uh, but it's probably true. Need green, black. Blood Saran doesn't fetch by you. Okay, then I need green. Savannah. Maybe Tundra instead. Nope, Savannah, green. Savannah or Trop. Maybe Trop.
So if I just play the Strix and the Strix gets countered, it's pretty disastrous. If I get Jitte equip and I get to get rid of the Delver for a single Jitte counter, and then I keep some life around for the Tarmogoyf, that gives me a pretty ch good chance of stabilizing the game with three pieces of equipment and a Strix afterwards. All right. Dead. The Brazen Borrower here doesn't help. I'll keep this hand. This is a this is a weird looking stone blade hand where the cards that we uh, pitch the force of will look a little funny. All right, am I going to get stifled? That's that's question one of the night, probably. A sweet brainstorm art. Didn't know that existed. Is that like a Jace spellbook brainstorm or something? Multiple basic island. I don't exactly know what's going on. I'm going to masquerade his stone blade for a little while. We're playing against the combo deck. I don't have a lot of game versus that. Like if we're playing against something like High Tide. Um, actually, I don't really need to brainstorm right now, so I won't. I can't play Brainstorm, activate Stoneforge, and, like, play a one-drop. Rockinatus, you are also fired. Congratulations. Oh, it's, like, sneak and show. Trying to get a little magic online lag. I'll have to reboot after this round, but that's okay. Can't catch a break. Brainstorm into another force of will. Oh, we did it. Nice. Put back like these two. Uh, 
one of the birds I put back was a bird lord. The other one uh, makes your birds one colorless cheaper and gets plus one plus one for every, uh, I think it's flying creature that enters the battlefield under your control. All right, do I want green or black mana? Probably black. Oh, I guess I can get Bayou. Let's go. <laughs> it is winter orb time. The awkward thing here is that my opponent can operate pretty well under limited resources. Like Ancient Tomb plus Lotus Petal can cast a show and tell, for example. But it does make their cantrips considerably worse. Um, that's the one point of damage I need to have lethal next turn. Five plus six. Oh my god, and we found Force of Will off one card draw. Nice! <laughs> Birds. Coat of arms. Hmm. Yeah, there's like favorable winds. There's the the bird specific enchantment. A car. My power is unmatched. Wait, wrong game. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Squadron Hawk is a bird, right? And Squadron Hawk isn't in this deck? This seems like a crime against humanity. Squadron Hawk MTG. According to other... It is a bird. It is a bird. Oh no. Yeah, maybe Squadron Hawk should be in here somewhere. All right. What do I like? Hydroblast is good. Veil of Summer is good. I think Nature's Chant is too late most of the time. Like, it technically does stuff, but I don't know that it does stuff in a way that results in me winning the game most of the time. There's some worlds where they just go, like, sneak attack pass that Nature's Chant is good in. But in most other worlds, it isn't. And it's really hard to beat an Omni with a disenchant effect. I don't want Swords to Plowshares. I feel pretty confident about that. I don't really want Jitte. Battle Screech is what you're thinking of. I could like Sylvan Library. God, like so many of the things that I can bring in are just so mediocre. Like the merge, the disenchant, 
the Sullivan Library. Those are all medium minus. I mean, we're up a game in this round. Like, do I want to submerge for a Grizzlebrand? No, probably not. Eh. Grab one library, I guess. Yeah, apple pies. The the sideboard seems medium minus. Like, no, no, no offense to you, but I don't feel like my in out numbers have worked particularly well. Headshot catcher, I like. I like where your head's at. Do I just need to, like, mulligan to force a will? Because, like, this is a solid hand that has a bunch of stuff in it, but it has no cantrip, no ability to counter my opponent's stuff. I don't know that this actually wins. I'm going to mulligan. Same? Oh no. Uh, so this is five. I don't think I get to throw this back. I think I just need to keep a critical density of cards. I'm going to try to keep this Winter Orb Derevi combo and see if that's good enough to get there. All right. Don't mulligan to Force of Will in the future. Do bring in other things. Guess I can just F6. I'm not brainstorming during my opponent's turn because of defense grid. Woo! Didn't get brainstorm blocked. Um, the Winter Orb doesn't really do anything yet. So I guess I'll just play Stone Forge Mystic this turn. Oh, no. hello. Okay, there you are. Uh, Scrubland gives me all colors. Citadel Storm is a reasonable vintage thing. Called Tinker though. Tinker is what makes that good. It's not the uh the Citadel itself that is innately good. Go and tell for it. Oh. All right. What am I doing with my life? My winter orbing. I think I'm winter orbing. I don't think I beat my opponent if they just have it. So, if this shuts down a pile of cantrips, cool. If I get another turn, I just, like, untap Trop, play a bird. Alright.
Or I guess I can just play Derevi next turn. Next turn I can cast Derevi. Yes, this is about the same. Maybe, maybe they won't have it. Oh, they had it. That's not good. There is a chance I don't die here, though. I am not going to block. I'm going to take that hit. I can play my bird. A bird king. Savanna for diversity. Alright, go blue, green, white for Duder. Duder can untap Birds of Paradise. Oh, one Mr. Lee, thank you very much for raiding. Hello, everyone who's just tuning in. Bill Gallagher of Thrabe and you here. We are playing the common legacy matchup Birds versus Sneak and Show. Okay, I get to untap something else. Um, I guess I'll untap this now. All right, let's see if we die. We effectively die to an Emrakul. We don't die to a Grizzlebrand. Emrakul gets seven permanents out of us. Yeah, there, there, there's some cards you might have to read here for sure. Eagle? Kinda, thank you very much for your continued support. Oh shit, we won. <laughs> Opponent had all those cards, but no finishers there. Holy crap. That's a little bit lucky, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Alright, um, this hand doesn't have green mana. Um, and I am on the play. I think I'm gonna mulligan this one and not just be at the mercy of this turn one brainstorm. This is a much more stable hand, I like this. Uh, so for those of you who are watching on the YouTube end, we're chatting about Slay the Spire a little bit right now. Yeah, I have... 
I've either gotten two or three hearts in a row. I know I've gotten two. Maybe I've gotten three. The runs get pretty blurry, though. I've been playing a lot of the silent. The silent got some really cool balance updates that I think make the character way more fun. Because it basically used to be that, like, oh, so glad I didn't pitch the force of will. It used to basically be that, like, poison was kind of the meta for killing the heart. And now it's much more realistic to play, like, shiv based builds and whatnot. And I've been enjoying that a ton. Oh, Magic Online, you're so much snappier now. I think I'm just going to get my clock into play here. Yeah, it, it was tung tungsten rod. It was tungsten rod or bust a lot of the times with silent for any sort of shiv based build grab savannah with this i think Yeah, so I feel like Watcher is objectively the most powerful character, and most of the time when you die, it's your fault, because you were like, it'll be fine, I can stay in Wrath, and then the narrator's voice pops in, it was not fine, and you die. Um, but I think one thing that's just, like, super cool about Slay the Spire is that it's such a beautifully balanced game. Like, I probably have somewhere on the order of 400 hours into Slay the Spire, maybe closer to 500 now. I've been playing it again recently. And I still think all of the classes are great, and I still enjoy playing it just all the time. Sometimes I'll take a break of a month or two. But I always come back to that game. Want more blue. Defect is really cool. Like, Defect's endgame is just insane. Oh man, are we gonna die? Are we gonna die with the opponent at four? Seems like it. Oh, hold on, I see two Narc Amoebas. Oh no, the other two are at the bottom of the column. I got excited for a second. All right, is the Dread Return in their hand? No, the Dread Return's in the graveyard. The Thassa's Oracle's there. Well, damn. Oh, man, we're not improving too much for this, are we? Again, we don't have things like Fluster Storms or Spell Pierces in the sideboard that are just generic combo hate. Swords the Oracle is uh, is not going to do what you want it to do. So they have zero cards in library, so the Thassa's Oracle doesn't even need to be in play. Oh, just to send a message. Fair. <laughs>
I think I'm at a nature's chant just to blow up artifact mana. I think that's the level of desperation that I'm going to be in. Wait. So Jitte is not really reasonable. Or is it? Dark Omega, maybe Retriever, Trigger Resolves, Kill One, Dark, you know, maybe, maybe. I think Winter Orb is worse for me than it is for my opponent. And these Swords to Plowshares are not going to do things the vast majority of the time. I am, in fact, going to board them out and board in some Sylvan Libraries. Just help me better dig towards Force of Will and Rest in Peace. Um, I also don't have access to Force of Negation as a generic hate card here, uh, which is rough. Uh, um, see if my opponent mulligans. I probably have to ship this one. Like, Rest in Peace is good, but it needs to be castable. And this is a hand that would fall apart to a Thought Seize or just lose on turn one. That's a bad combo. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this. This at least has turn two Rest in Peace. So I'll keep it. Uh, I have to put two of these back. Cost too much mana and can go back. And I guess this goes back, question mark. Yeah, Monster Train is another game that I had a lot of fun with. Monster Train and Slay's Pyre are, are scratch the same itch, but they do so kind of differently. So, like, Monster Train. Oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. Alright, um, finishing the thought. Um, Monster Train is the sort of game that is much easier to just pick up and play. It's more noob-friendly than Slay the Spire is. Um, Monster Train is also significantly easier than Slay the Spire. The decision trees are less complex. Uh, Korkruxian, yeah. I, I don't know that we have enough hits for Glint Nest Crane. Like, it's cool when it works. Also, I'm, like, super frustrated that I just, like, physically clicked on the wrong land. Like, I could have a Rest in Peace in play right now. That's okay. Like, you gotta, gotta shrug that sort of thing off when you're streaming. I need to just force of will that and hope my opponent doesn't have a follow-up. All right, they did, and their library is empty, so they have a guaranteed kill. All right. We'll concede there. Like, I don't think I win the game where I'm on the play anyway, but I, I could have rest in peace that game, and my opponent couldn't have stopped it. That was just me chatting with chat. All right, um, I'm going to keep this hand. It's a reasonable hand of magic cards where I try to build something off of whatever happens with Baleful Strix. Yeah, Hyperlink. I thought the, like, all-in hyper-aggressive 
red moon deck that I played was actually pretty good. The Giants. God, don't stifle me. My poor little heart can't take it. Okay, that's fine. All right, I want blue for one of these colors. And then what do I want for the second? I have all of my colors, so it's what do I want doubles of? Blue. Maybe blue, white. Grab a tundra. So, Monday on YouTube, there's a, a deck that I dubbed Super Nick Fit coming to play. Uh, it features three flavors of Nickel Bolas. Playing against a mono black deck? We are. <clears throat> okay. None of the cards that I care about got hit. I think we win the game on our turn. I think we go... Derevi. So it's white, green, blue. P.E.S. Jesus, absolutely. Barb is the word. Is the word, is the word, is the word. Wait, hold on. Wrong song. Now I hit with Baleful Strix and untap another land. And now I get to Winter Orb. Hello and good luck. Oh, there is another color in there. Nick fit, maybe? Mm, I don't like the timing of that. That is going to give me another land for my turn. Take blue white this turn. Can I always yes this? No, I can't. Um, yeah, depths is also possible. If it is depths, I have double swords to plowshares and two flyers here. Just got cut off blue. Now my birds have effective vigilance. I got blue back. All right, blue, green, hey, white with that, just so I can leave up the basic planes. T 
TES Jesus, thank you very much for your continued support. I very much do appreciate it. Incinerating ticks, throwing them right into the void for your entertainment. This is just going to be like green, black pox, and there's going to be like a life from the loam. Kind of getting some uh, some loam vibes over here, you know. We just kill our opponent. I'm not going to know exactly what to do for post sideboard games. Veil of Summer seems like a slam dunk, though. I feel pretty confident about that thus far. Apple Pies, you're allowed to just play Choke. It's okay. Yeah, this is sure feeling like it's it's ox or pox adjacent. Three Wastelands is rough. I'm very happy to hear that. How about damage to a player? To a player. We're just a little slow on the Empyrean Angel here. I'm going to keep going dome. I really just need one more mana. The second body in play and the ability to turn this into something that can still be attacking is so important. Um, if I were playing Maverick right now, I would be playing Junk. Plague Engineer is stupid. Like, that card is just so good in this current meta. Well, Bob, Bob, we've got answered. It's more Planeswalkers that we're worried about. The fact that my opponent hasn't had any creatures this game and we've drawn double swords of plowshares is really rough. No love for Necra. For as long as I've been playing Magic, everyone has called it junk. Well, everyone, except those fools running around calling it Abzan. I don't like most of the new names. All I'm saying is Rug Delver sounds great. Beamer Delver, I don't think we needed it. Uh, 
I now have no way of stopping this Liliana ultimate. Because this minuses, kills this, this ticks up. I can't play anything that has haste. I lose to that emblem. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. That's rough. All right. I like Veil. I like Library. I probably like Gideon just as another finisher, and I probably like Mariner for the protection clause. Uh, based on that game, I don't like Swords to Plowshares. <clears throat> then what? Winter Orbs? I don't think I like Winter Orbs. My opponent has so many ways to get rid of it that it's a hiccup rather than a lights out punch. And then I'm not sure on the last couple of cards. I don't know that I can afford any cards that are going to be dead most of the time, T.E.S. Jesus. So, like, that game I, I probably lost because I had two Swords of Plowshares that didn't have targets. And if they were sitting there with a hand of, like, Planeswalkers and removal spells, things like Swords of Plowshares and Nature Chant are going to be pretty questionable. I don't know what the last two cuts are. Maybe I go down the Jitte. The stats on this, two, three. I want to keep this. I have two lands and a mana accelerator. Drop. I think drop. I think I need to leave my basics in my deck. So that I can get them out with Assassin's Trophy later. And this Force of Will is going to protect Stoneforge Mystic and try to get this Batter Skull into play. That's that's the plan. I want batter skull. I just value that large, fast body right now. And then I still have Sword of Fire and Ice for backup if things go wrong later.
See if this just gets assassins trophied. Oh. That's nice. Play bird, put in sword this turn. So that means no stone forge attack, just batter skull. All right, nice, nice. Hopefully we're not just like walking into some sweeper here. I don't think there's much I get to do about that if they do have one. What are they thinking about? Like, they have to have something that's castable, right? It's not Assassin's Trophy because they would have just Assassin's Trophy the Batter Skull on my t on their turn before I could bounce it. Okay. Sure. Could have done that in combat to save four life. I guess they lose harder to winter orb a Tarmogoyf. Sure. I think equip to bird is more valuable than playing Sylvan Library here. Suiting up birds of paradise. This is some good honest magic right here. Drawing a land would be hot. No dice. That's fine. Really, a board sweeper that I'm worried about. Like a toxic deluge for X equals three leaves Tarmogoyf alive, uh, and in fact grows Tarmogoyf. I mean, that's definitely annoying. I think I'm just going to my opponent's face here. This is bad for me. I think I would like to hit a land naturally here. All right, Sylvan Library versus another bird. I think just another bird. I 
because now I have theoretical lethal through a Liliana activation. Balakut, you up? Thank you very much for following. Hope you're enjoying the content. Yeah, so on my previous turn, I don't think shooting the Lily does much good. Because I don't think I'm trying to kill the Lily. I think I am trying to get my opponent dead. I would love to draw a land. The land is so good for me. <clears throat> I think I like this play. Because it gives this another plus one, plus one due to its own innate ability. So this is theoretical lethal without mucking around with the sword. I get Island, I can play Glint Nest Crane this turn. Which I'm down for. We're just trying to make my opponent's life as awkward as possible. Nice, we hit. We are also approaching just batter skull equip territory as another way of killing my opponent. <clears throat> nice. So now I know my opponent has Tarmogoyfs, which means I need to think about Swords to Plowshares again. Alternatively, I can just think about Rest in Peace, which blanks all Tarmogoyfs. I still don't feel great about that. I think I need to do this. Then I need three cuts. I gotta trim one or two of those just since they're slow late game cards. And I don't know, one bird of paradise. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan this one for something with more land. My opponent is a wasteland deck after all. And they have shown me that they very aggressively want to wasteland me. Like, that's that's a big part of their plan. I would keep this on two, but not on three cards. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this. Oh, I don't have blue with this hand. <clears throat> um, am I keeping anyway? I really don't want to go to get five against this opponent. 
Maybe I keep this anyway. Play out a scrub land here. I can play around Wasteland by playing planes, but then if I rip a blue source, I can't Baleful Strix next turn. Fair. Uh, that's life from loam. I'll brainstorm in response to that. Oh, I don't think I beat this life from the loam if I don't find rest in peace. Because this needs to find a non basic source in order to cast this brainstorm. C? Probably C. All right, let's find a brain. Uh, let's find a rest in peace. Did not find it, Jet. Feel pretty confident that I'm going to lose to that now. I also don't have a shuffle effect. That's very bad. That's very bad. We're going to glint nest crane and get through the cards that I put on top. I guess I should have put the baleful strikes on top. But I could have guaranteed found that. So, Assassin's Trophy on my lands is probably how I end up losing this game in the long run. I also don't have access to a basic swamp for Baleful Strix. Yeah. So I boarded in Rest in Peace and outsourced the plowshares. So that's just there. 
Cool. Like next turn I can solve in library, but I don't think that's going to get me out of this spot. Oh, whatever this is, I'm all right. We're done. We're done. All right, so what's the uh, the verdict on birds? So originally at the beginning of this stream, the deck list was submitted with far wastelands, which I I talked the donor out of uh, out of submitting. Uh, the mana base for this deck is a little bit greedy. We what's the verdict? Yes, pilot dude, well done. Um, I don't think this deck should exist as a four color deck. Like. Baleful Strix is a great bird, but I think that fourth color strains the mana base a little, little much. I would go into Bant, and I would start thinking about playing the Squadron Hawks that we mentioned in the middle of the stream, as well as some other Lord effect that pumps the team. And I would either commit more fully to the Stoneforge Mystic package or cut it. Like, the Stoneforge Mystic was very good and was how we won a bunch of our games, but there's only two Stoneforge Mystics in this deck, right? So, if you want the Stoneforge Mystic package to be a part of this plan, you should be playing more of them. And if you don't want it to be a part of the plan, like, pull it and play more pump effects for the team to, uh, like, lean harder into the tribal aspects of this deck. The winner orb package was not particularly strong a lot of the time. Like, I think there was two or three games where we did assemble Derevi plus winter orb, and it was quite good. But, like, against Delver, it feels bad. And against Combo, it feels bad. So that really only leaves the control decks where that's super strong. You know. Um, Robbot, I don't think this tribe is particularly strong. Like, humans is a really strong tribe, one of the, the most well-supported tribes in all of Magic, right? And so, like, your cards are really good. Independently, all those human cards that are in that deck are strong. And synergy only makes them stronger. Whereas the birds, well, of these, like, Birds of Paradise and Baleful Strix see Legacy play, and Glint Nest Crane saw Legacy play for a tiny bit and maybe will again in the future. But then, like, the Watchers and Derevis and the Empyrean Angels are, like, below Legacy power level standards. Like, maybe, maybe if you go Bant, you can get Avon Mind Sensor in here. That gives you some other taxation angles that you can go on. Like... There's other stuff here. Maybe maybe you can start going the battle screech direction and like go wide. Um maybe you can use like the force of virtue to pump the entire team and then you're a little less soft to plague engineer as well. There's other directions you can take this, but I think it needs something else. Um you have a stone and uh, thank you very much for following and hyperlink, thank you very much for gifting that sub. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I felt like, generically, the sideboard wasn't good. So, when I played against Delver, I didn't really have more removal spells. When I played against Combo, I often didn't have flexible things like Force of Negation and Flusterstorm that were going to be generically good to be bringing in. Um... So overall, I kind of felt like I was a dog in all of the matches that I played tonight, and and that's okay. That's that's fine. Uh, but I, I think we did a lot of workshopping here tonight. One win, one gift sub. Yeah, I'll I'll take it. 
<laughs> all right. Thank you all very much for joining me tonight. For those of you who are watching on the YouTube end, if you made it this far, you know, please throw me a like or something of that nature. It really helps out with my analytics and keeps me happy and making all sorts of sweet legacy content. I will see you again soon, YouTube folks.